Pilgrim Branch Every church who we love and they call the branch Located at 40, 33 Highway 471 In the community of Goshen Springs Where we are bringing refreshment to the community Woo! We are happy to be in your homes And wherever you are viewing this worship service with you I'm excited about today We're going to have a duet soon By a powerful lady and her daughter-in-law Mother-in-law and daughter-in-law singing together. Then we have one of our most powerful ministers. We got about five of them. Powerful ministers to bring the message today. The evangelist Jacqueline Stokes. So I'm excited about this Sunday morning. Before we go any further, let me give you a, a scripture. Let's open with prayer. Fill your Bibles. Hope you do. Maybe you have one cell phone, your tablets, your iPads. We pray that it always reside in our heart. I'm going to read a scripture, and many of you probably already memorized this scripture. It has been recited many times, but we're going to read it together. 23rd Psalm. Y'all know that, right? Mm -hmm. It goes, the Lord is my shepherd. shepherd. Yeah. I shall not want. He made me to Lie down in the green, green pastures. He leaded me beside the still, still waters. waters. He restored my soul. He leaded me in the paths of righteousness. Why? For his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear. No evil. Why? For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me, where? In the presence of mine enemies. I'm able to eat and heal myself up in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup. Not half full. My cup running over. Surely we'll have to say all that. Goodness, but just not goodness. Goodness and mercy shall follow me. What's that behind you? Oh, that's just goodness and mercy follow me. They follow me. Goodness and mercy follow me. Follow me what? All the days of my life. And oh, wait. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord. How long? Oh, oh goodness. Let's go into a prayer. The prayer will. We're in the midst of this Thanksgiving season. It's going to be a prayer of Thanksgiving. Not a prayer of supplication. Not a prayer of Thanksgiving. This is a prayer of thanking God for being God. Yes. They ever just went to and just thank them without yes. even asking to just thank you. Our Father, we come just thank you for being God. Thank we thank you, Father, for this, this day. We thank you for this ability, Father, for us to worship together. We thank you, Father, for the for the activities of our land. We thank you, Father, for, for, for bringing us thus far. We thank you, Father, for being our shepherd, Father. We thank you, Father, that we don't have to want, Father. We thank you, Father, for goodness and mercy following us. We thank you, Father, for preparing us a table in the presence of my enemy. We thank you, Father, that we don't have to worry, that we don't have to fret. We thank you, Father, for providing all of our needs. If I had a thousand tongues, I could not thank you enough, Father, but we just together said, thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. If we've not lived a life of Thanksgiving, forgive us, Father. Cast that spirit from the forest and east from the west, Father, for we surely thank you, Father. And I thank you, Father, for not only what you've done. Yes, Lord. We thank you for all the things you provided for us that's to come to pass, Father. Yes, we love you, Father. Yes. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. When Jesus was.
Baba Nora, and to the ministers of the house, and also to each and every member of Pilgrim Branch, those that were here before COVID and those that have joined us, have joined us over social media. We thank God for you. We pray, we pray for you daily. Amen. 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 We're going to travel to the book of Ephesians. Mm -hmm. Ephesians, the fifth chapter. While you're getting prepared, Ephesians, the fifth chapter, we will bow for a word of prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, mm -hmm. Lord, we say thank you. Mm -hmm. Father, we thank you for this day. Father, we thank you for this hour. Father, we thank you for this minute. Lord, we give you glory. We give you honor. Father, as we go into this word, Father, will you hijack it behind the rugged cross, oh God. Father, they would only see you and allow the words that come from my mouth to begin to just penetrate in their hearts and their souls so they will be willing to walk with you, oh God. That they'll be willing to give up their wicked ways, oh God. And they'll be willing to be called your, your child. They'll be happy to be called a Christian. Father, we say thank you, Lord. Father, we give you glory and we give you honor. Father, these and other blessings we ask in your darling son, Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 For those of you that have gone to the Ephesians 5th chapter, we're going to do a little skipping around, but you'll understand where I'm going shortly. Right. Ephesians, the fifth chapter, verse two says, verse one says, Be ye therefore followers of God mm -hmm. as dear children, and walk in love as Christ has also loved us, and have given himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling sake. Ephesians 5, chapter the 8th and 9th verse said, For ye were sometimes darkness, but now ye are light in the Lord. Walk as the children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Ephesians 5, chapter 15 through 16. See then that ye walk circumspectly, mm -hmm. not as fools, but as wise. Redeem it the time, because the days are evil. We want to take for a subject today the walks of life. Mm -hmm. What does your walk look like? Mm -hmm. okay. For many months on our Wednesday night Bible class lessons, we've been talking about journeys. Mm -hmm. Months after months after months. And right now we're on journeys to Christ's life. As we know that journeys can be taken in many different forms. Mm -hmm. okay. We can walk, we can drive, we can ride, fly, mm -hmm. are most of our most common ways to journey. Mm -hmm. Some of us can travel the world sitting in front of our televisions, on our cell phones, or on our computers. The visual journey is what some of us think about. Or we recall a journey in our minds that can either bring joy or sometimes we allow the enemy to step in. And our journey can cause us fear or despair. Today, we're going to discuss the part of life's journey where we are walking. Quite some years ago in speech class, there was a challenge to write a speech that involved action. I didn't mind singing, but a speech scared me to death. Many days had passed and fear had gripped my soul because I always walked like I was going to put out a fight, meaning I walked fast. And people always commented on how fast I walked, the decision was made to write a speech on the walks of life. Recalling how the illustrations of the physical walk of people around the world actually caught and held the attention of a class of college students. And recalling as the descriptions were read and the intentions were performed, the illustrations were performed, a question came to my mind. 
to name a few of the walks. One of the walks was the turtle. How the person walks like a turtle. Those of you that have witnessed a turtle know that it is slow yet methodical in their travels. The walk most familiar to parents is the I don't want to. A walk with a lift body. A slow dragging of the feet. And no intention of doing what you told them at all. The speedy walk was the fast paced walk where the person will run over anything and anyone in the way to accomplish what it is they're going to do. The strap was a walk that lets the world see the level of importance that that person had and how they should be addressed upon meeting them. Years have gone by and life has presented some challenges and we've become wiser in how we walk. Although our physical walk may catch your attention, mm -hmm. are we working on our spiritual walk with God? How are you walking now? The speech, no matter how old it is, is relevant today. It may only mention the physical walks, but after years and issues of life, we can say that we are now focused on our spiritual walk with Christ. Christians have sometimes experienced the turtle walk when it seems like they were walking with the Lord and it seems like nothing was getting better in their lives. And so they start to do the walk we see the children do. I don't want to walk. When the Lord is saying you are my child, I called you out of the world to be my disciple. I called you to preach unto sinners. Or I have called you to be a witness to a dying world. How many of you can begin to slow down and think like the turtle? Mm -hmm. Methodically walk away. When we know that we were instructed in Luke the 14th chapter and the 23rd verse. And the Lord said unto the servant, go out into the highways and the hedges mm -hmm. and compel them to come in. That my house may be filled. Mm -hmm. Matthew 28 and 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Some of you at one time, we bent our bodies forward. Mm -hmm. We started to drag our feet. Yes. Simply because we didn't want to do what God said to mm -hmm. mm -hmm. No, what the Bible says in Revelation, Jesus said, I stand at the door and knock. Yes, God. If any man hear my voice and open the door, mm -hmm. I will come in with him and I will sup with him and he with me. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, he does not make us walk with him. He is a God of free will. He lets you decide whether you want to serve the only and true living God. The truth of the matter is life's interests will sometimes change your walk. Mm -hmm. Disaster, destruction, illness, death, finances, and so on. So we must become obedient to the word of God. Our daily walk should not reflect the walk of the struck walker. We can hold our heads so high that God can't tell us any different thing and what to do. We can't be so proud mm -hmm. that we can't hear what God is saying to us. As stated several times in the book of Revelation, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Amen. Just in case you don't know who the church is, what now? Know that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. 
The discussion of the speedy walker will be one that is exciting to us all. The speedy walker can save even in the midst of trials and tribulations. Psalms 34 will bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. This walker is often quick to be of service to anyone and everyone. They're willing to go help. They'll ask you, what can I do to help you? What can I do for you? The spirit walker is one that has a heart of God, a heart of a servant, and you can see that they are walking with Christ. Do you understand that your walk in life affects other people? Well, when you begin to understand the, the heart of the speedy walker, the speedy walker will just say, you've done a good job. You're doing real good. They keep on encouraging you. What kind of walker are you? Are you the turtle that's taking your time? Say, so, Lord, I know I need to be here. But Lord, I just really don't want to do it right now. Father, I, are you, I need to ask you, are you the walker that I don't want to do? Well, just like our children, sometimes we treat God like our children treat us. God will say, go do, and you'll say, I just don't want to do. God will show you something or someone that somebody you need to pray for. You say, Lord, I pray for them in the morning. Somebody you need to give a call. You say, Lord, I call them in the morning, but I really don't want to do it. I need you to understand, we don't, when we begin to walk with the Lord, whatever he calls us to do, yes. we have to be a willing vessel to do what God has told us to do. That's right. Here is the question is, why should we walk with God? Psalms 128 and 1, it says, blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord and walk in his ways. Ephesians 2 and 10 said that we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God had before ordained that we shall walk in them. Woo! Glory to God. That means we are blessed when we are walking. That's why we walk with God because he's blessing us. He keeps on blessing us. And then we understand we are his workmanship. We desire to walk with him. Before and during our walk with the Lord, we must get dressed. Why would you tell me that I got to get dressed? Because the walks of life are not easy. Sometimes you're going to walk down a road, you're going to step in a pothole. And that pothole may be your friend. You keep on walking and you may fall off the edge of the road. The people that called you to fall off the edge of the road was your family. You know when you're driving down the road and you're going to see a sign that says detour. That means you got to change the direction in which you're going. God has allowed so many times to take a detour because we got off the path that he had us on. Before you do your walk, I need you to get dressed. Ephesians 6 says, Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. See, you can't walk with God unless you're strong in the Lord and the power of his might. We know that he's right there with us when we get weak, when we get tired, when we get frustrated, when we want to give up. But then in the Bible says, be strong. 
gotta look around before you take a step. You gotta think about it and you really gotta pray about it. Follow God in love. People do what they love. So if you love God, you're willing to walk with Him. You love God, you will reap good fruit to His will and His Spirit with thanks and obedience. Well, why is it they're saying give thanks and obedience? Because God loved you enough that He allowed you to walk with Him. Thank God for being present in the good times. Thank God for being present in the bad times. Thank God for talking to you in the midnight hour. And when you know the Bible lets us know that obedience is better than sacrifice. Simply if we just be obedient to God's word, we won't have to sacrifice because we walk and not done what he told us to do. And it says redeeming the time, it requires that you change what you do. God's will is not the culture. We, re we redeem the culture dresses up like darkness instead of wearing light on their sleeve. The Bible lets us know that the days are evil. So when you're walking, you better be sure that you're walking in the Lord and that your God is holding your hand. We've got to be filled with the Spirit. We've got to be filled with the Spirit of God. We can't be drunk. We can't be high. We got to know that it is the Spirit of God that's talking to us. Yes. That is the Spirit of God leading us in the direction that He has us to go. Yes. We can't just choose to do what we want to do because we were called. We were, we, we were called by God and He has changed us to be His child. And we are a vessel. Yes. And the people see us walking the trail to the Word of God. Your walking life can affect someone else's walk in life. Not just your physical walk. How you talk can change someone's life. How you respond is a part of your walk in life. How you give body movements is a part of how you walk in life. Because you must know as a Christian that the only Bible that somebody will read is watching your life. You've got to choose who you're going to walk with. As old folks say, stop dancing with the devil and start walking with Christ. You've got to choose you this day who you're going to serve. Yeah. How is it that you're going to walk? You've got to walk upright. You can't just be tiddling and tapping from one side to the other. How is it that you walk sometimes knowing who you are? Yes, you can walk like a strut up. You can put your head up in the air and you can say, yes, I'm a king's kid. I was brought with a price. Yes, I'm a king's kid because, because Christ gave his life for me. Yes, I'm a king's kid because he loved me so much. Yes. Oh God, how do you want us to walk? Yes. Sometimes in our life we realize that we walk the right and the Bible lets us know he that walketh uprightly and worketh righteousness and speaketh truth, it is in his heart. How, Lord, do you want us to walk? Here, I want you to walk upright. Psalms 84 and 11 said, For the God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give us grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk upright. Don't that make you want to walk upright? Proverbs say he lays up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buffer to them that walk upright. Hallelujah, God. Proverbs say he that walketh in his upright. 
direction that you would have me to walk. Father, because I don't want to become a stumbling block to anybody. Because the way we as Christians walk, we have to walk upright because we can become stumbling blocks to other people's lives. And when we're thinking about our walks in life, begin to thank God that he allowed us to walk with him. Because he is our God. Every time Sister Steen sings, walk with me, Lord. And she says, walk with me. She said, hold my hand, Lord. And she said, don't leave me alone, Lord. Because we know we can falter along the way. And when Sister Steen sings that song, sometimes it just seems like it takes a minute. But the, the harder she sings it, the deeper it gets. Because we realize that no matter what we choose to do, that if, if we don't have God in our lives, we're just making a motion. What is your wife? What is your walk like today? Can someone say that I came to Christ because of you? That I changed my mind because of the God that they saw in you? That I stopped using bad words because of you? What does your walk look like? Does it look like your father? Does it look like you're Christ-like? We stand with a thankful and grateful heart. Because many times we've let go of his hand. But God never let go of ours. He never let go. As you go forward from this day, think about what your walk looks like. Yes, people judge what your walk looks like. Let them judge. But you just keep on walking and holding to God's hand. The days got a little tough. But God is still here. Times have gotten rough. But God is still here. God is still faithful. And he's still willing to hold our hand. He's still willing to be our God. He didn't give up on us. And we truly cannot give up on him. God bless you. Wow.